Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV, I want to show you a couple of cards that I was fooling around with. I was playing with the thumping technique and I made three summary cards and I thought it'd be fun to share them with you here. Let me show you the tools and products you need to make these cards. First, you're going to need some ink. For my demo card, I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs Ocean Mist ink and some of the Fresh Asparagus ink. I'm also going to use some of the VersaFine black ink. Now along with the ink, for the thumping technique, I'm going to use one of the Tombow markers, and this is marker number 373. For stamp sets, I'm going to use the Wild Blossom stamp set along with the massive messages for the greeting. This stamp set is a really fun stamp set to do the thumping technique because it's got so many solid silhouette style images. I'm also going to use some ribbon that I found in my stash. This is some black gingham ribbon. I'm going to use a little bit of black twine and a couple buttons. I'm not sure which one I want to use yet, so I picked a few out of my stash. These are turquoise C buttons. Then I've got some scissors here to use. I've got a craft pick, and I have some adhesive. I'm also going to use my Misty stamping tool because one of the images that I'm going to use from the Wild Blossom set is this huge background image. And you can see how big this stamp is. It's just enormous. So by using the Misty, I'm guaranteed to get a great impression and I can position it exactly where I want. So let me make a little room here on my table. And I'm going to start off by creating the vine part of this card. So what I'm going to do is just lay my piece of cardstock onto my Misty. And you can use grid paper or a piece of scrap paper underneath. I do happen to have some scrap paper, so I'll just stick that underneath. And this way I won't stamp outside of, too much outside of this cushion. And actually, if you use the grid paper, it'll fit the entire mat. Actually, I'm not gonna use it right now but because I don't mind getting a little bit of ink on here, but if you're worried about that, just use the piece of grid paper that came with your Misty. Okay, so I'm gonna position this at about the half inch mark on the bottom. That gives me a little bit of overlap. And then I'm gonna position my stamp where I want it. So I want this to be, let's see, maybe I'll turn it this way. Okay, I want my stamp to be about there because I want to leave room for my greeting. And this is my greeting stamp. So that's going to fit nicely down at the bottom. Okay, so now that I have it positioned, I'm just going to grab it with the lid and then I'm going to position it back at the half inch mark. Now, I couldn't find my magnets this morning. I don't always use them, but if you uh, want to use the magnets, just put the magnets on the paper, just separate them, and then you don't have to worry about your paper sticking to your stamp after you stamp or when you're positioning. Okay, so I have some fresh asparagus ink here, and I'm going to ink up this stamp real well with the fresh asparagus. The Misty is just a lifesaver when it comes to big background stamps. I love how you can get a great impression and you don't have to worry about dropping the stamp or any of those other issues that come up when you're trying to, to use big backgrounds. Okay, and now I'm going to stamp that and then just putting pressure all over the images to make sure I get good contact everywhere. Okay, and then there is my image. Isn't that just perfect? Really looks good. Okay, so I'm going to pull this stamp off of the Misty and close this up and get it out of the way. All right, my next step is to take some of this Ocean Mist ink, and I have three of the different flowers from the Wild Blossom stamp set. So the ones that I'm using are these three up here. And you can use this one too. This is the opposite direction of this one, but I don't have 
too many areas to stamp here, so this will be enough. So I'm also going to open up my marker. This is again Tombow Marker 373. And I'm going to start with one of the flowers. I'm going to ink that up real well with the Ocean Mist ink. And I'm going to take the marker and thump darker turquoise all over the surface of that flower. And then I'm going to huff on it to re-moisten the ocean mist that's underneath. That just means breathing warm, moist air. And then I'm going to stamp it. Isn't that so pretty? You get all that beautiful detail. And if you visit stamptv.com, underneath the video, you'll see an actual photograph of this card. So you'll get a better view. So let's do another one of these. Same deal, thumping all over the surface. And again, huffing. And I'll put this one over here. Okay. I am cleaning my stamp in between each application because I don't want to contaminate my Ocean Mist pad by getting any darker ink on it. So now I'm using the bigger flower of those three. I'm doing the same thing. And you'll notice I'm turning my marker as I thump the ink on there. This way I don't get too much of a pattern. Huff and stamp. There we go. Let's do another one of those. And this set was designed to add flowers all over in different spots on this vine, but you can also add them in spots where there aren't empty vines. So just because you don't have a little empty spot like that to stamp a flower on, you can still stamp one next to the vine. It'll look very pretty. Okay, we'll stamp this one over here. All right. And now I'm going to add some real small ones to some different spots. And just needs a little thumping on that. We'll add one right about here. This is where you fill in for color. You'll see some spots that, that need color. And don't worry about stamping them all in different directions. That's the way they grow in nature. Let's do one right off of this. And put one in this area. I like this little stamp because you can really get into tight areas. There we go. And we'll put one up in that corner and maybe one right there. More thumping. here and we'll put one right in there okay there we go so now we have all of those beautiful flowers multicolored now I'm going to keep this ocean mist ink out because what I want to do is create a little bit of color behind my greeting. So I'm going to ink this up with Ocean Mist. And then I'm going to stamp that right down here at the bottom of my card. There we go. Now that's light and pretty. But I want to add the black on top of that, and I'm just going to stagger it a little bit just to give that a little bit of a shadow layer. So the blue is going to be the shadow, and the black is going to be the bold greeting. I'm using the VersaFine ink for this because it's so dark and it's so bold. All right, and I will stamp that. I think I'm going to stand up for this. Stamp that. Right about there. There we go. So now you can see, if you look very closely, and in the picture you'll be able to see it really well, you've got a little bit of a shadow layer behind that, and that's, that's really fun. It's pretty. Okay, 
So now my next step for this card is to add a piece of black cardstock behind it. So we'll add a little bit of black behind that panel. Give that a minute to dry. I'm also going to cut my ribbon too. So I'm going to put a little piece of ribbon across just about there. And then I'm going to need another piece of ribbon to tie a knot. All right. So let's add a little tape. And we will add that layer to this black onyx piece of cardstock. There we go. I'm going to move that just a little. You know me, it has to be straight or it's going to drive me nuts. And I know a lot of you are the same way. So I'm going to move it. There we go. Okay. That's a little bit better. All right, so now this piece is going to go right across kind of the upper middle part of the card. And I'm going to attach that. I just dropped the ribbon. I'm going to attach that to the back using a little bit of adhesive. Get that into place. Make sure that's straight. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to slip this piece of ribbon underneath and I'm going to tie a little knot. Just like that, nice and tight. And then I'm going to cut the free edge off of that ribbon. Let's see here. We can either do it that way or we can do it up. Let's do it up. Okay. So there's that. Now my next step is to choose a button. And I was really jazzed with this button because it's got this little decorative part on it. It's kind of cute. And I know you guys probably have those special buttons that you pull out of your collection that you don't know how you got them. You can also do a smaller button if you like that look a little bit better, or you can really be bold and do a huge button. So it's totally up to you, but I think I'm going to use this decorative one. So I'm going to cut a piece of twine and make that a little bit longer than it needs to be, just so I have lots of tying space. And I'm going to slip that underneath. And then I'm going to pull one side through one hole and the other side through the other hole. And if you have any trouble with this, you can always just trim the twine to a point. And that actually does help feed it through a little bit better. Like that. Okay. So now I'm going to tie a ribbon. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to tie actually a bow. Get that right over the knot. And then I'm going to make another little loop there, a little bow. You can pull it smaller or bigger, however big you want it to be. And trim off the excess like that. Then you can look at it. Maybe you want the tails to be a little bit shorter on the ribbon. Um, maybe you want to change the shape of the tails to two points instead of one point. I think that's looking pretty good. That one side looked a little long to me. And then this whole panel, and I always like to put this on at the end, even though it's a little bulky and awkward, I like to put it on the card base at the end just in case I had to make any adjustments to the ribbon in the back. And that's going to go on to a white card base. So let me line that up. like that. So that's my finished card. Now I wanted to show you a couple other combinations that I did. One combination that I really like 
is the Sweet Mango, and I like using marker 947 with it. Now, remember, you don't have to use any particular type of marker or ink pad. As long as they're both water-based, you can use them together. So maybe you have the Zig Clean Color markers, you can use those instead. Or if you have other dye ink markers, you can use those. But I want to show you what this color combination looks like together. This is really nice for fall if you want to do a fall floral. That's really pretty. And then they do dry quite a bit lighter. The other combination that I used for a card is our lovely lavender and the Tombow Marker 665. So I want to show you that combination too. If you're a purple lover, and I certainly am, I love purples, especially for florals. This is a really pretty combination. that pretty together. You can just see all that shading and spottiness in there. It's just quite lovely. So I want to show you a couple cards I made with these two combinations too because I made three cards using this technique today. I was having a lot of fun with it. All right, so you've seen my original. This is my turquoise, my ocean mist one. Here's the one with the sweet mango ink. And this one, you can see the layout's a little bit different. What I did with this one, I used the Sweet Mango ink and that darker orange marker number 947. And then I cut the panel out instead of stamping directly on the card and laid it on a little bit of black onyx, so kind of framed it out a bit. And then I tied the bow sideways onto that panel using a matching button. Okay, and then I used So Happy For You, and there's a little bit of craft ink behind that greeting. I didn't use the Sweet Mango. I decided to go with craft for that one. And then I have another card here, and this one uses that lovely lavender and marker 665. I did the same thing as the first card. I stamped it all directly onto the card, but I decided to change the orientation. So you have less vine up here, and I extended the flowers down a little bit so that they would fall out underneath the ribbon. And I found a, a button in my collection that worked, so I popped that on there as well. And then the thank you greeting that I used, I actually cut the thank you in half. And if you do a nice clean cut, then you can still position them back together like a puzzle piece on your block to have one long thank you, but then you can stagger them a little easier rather than having to ink up half and then half again to change the position. So that's kind of fun to do, and it really doesn't ruin your stamps. I know a lot of you don't like to do that, so I won't push it, but it... Um, it did make it easy to get this thank you greeting on there. And this one I highlighted behind there with some of the lovely lavender ink. So that, these are my three finished card projects. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more fun videos right here at StampTV.com. And thanks so much for watching.